Welcome back. We woke up to about 30 degree temperatures overnight, which has been pretty good compared to the last couple nights. It's been pretty cold on us and we've had frost all over. And we were finding that our solar water heater was not working as well as we wanted it to when we weren't getting a whole lot of sunlight. We were finding that our hose was freezing up, thus negatively impacting our crops that our hose is supposed to be heating up. So out with that system and in with the new system, we've got a decent sized compost pile. We had excavated the earth out underneath of this compost pile. We dug about two to three feet down and made a big bowl to start our compost in and it's butted right up against our water so it's passively starting to heat it. We started this compost pile up yesterday, last night, and it's already reaching upwards of 100 degrees with this nice sunny day and all of the activators starting to heat up and that compost is starting to take off. And as soon as we turn our solar system on to flow our water, which I'm going to talk about, the compost will start to transfer heat to the water flowing through it and then through the beds and back into our overflow tank. I'm going to explain that whole system. I wanted to talk about a few things real quick. So this internal greenhouse compost pile is slowly heating this whole airspace and it's going to transfer to the water in here and it's much smaller than it would need to be if we were transferring through the outside wall and losing all that heat to the outside temperatures. That's why I wanted to put this compost in our greenhouse in order to share all of the heat from it all of the time where we're not losing it to the outside temps. So this entirely free greenhouse heating system is going to work better than our small greenhouse because we can have this inside. We don't want to gas our ourselves out in our small greenhouse because the compost can release methane and other gases that can build up in a small area. This is such a large greenhouse that we're not too concerned with that. It won't affect us. This compost pile has been running for about 24 hours now and it's starting to heat up for us and I want to elaborate on that. A well-built compost pile will heat up within 24 to 48 hours if you have good ambient temperatures. It could take longer if you're outside and it's a larger pile. It could slowly heat up a lot slower than a small pile that's in a 70 degree greenhouse right now. So the greenhouse allowed this to heat up much faster because it protected it from the outside temperatures and it's only transferring heat into our greenhouse's airspace and into the floor and the water that were flowing through it. Now, if we built a massive pile in here, we could get it to burn for quite a while. The size of the pile I'm using now, I think we'll get about a three week to five week burn on this. I'm hoping for a little better, but we have tons of leaves out back that are not breaking down. They're all just kind of compacted together so we can chop those up and use those for fuel. And I think I could keep this going all winter with some decent temperatures. Now, what I did for this pile is I dug it out and I laid a bunch of cardboard in in order to insulate it from the direct cold floor so it would heat up faster and I think that helped us out in the long run because it caught any urine and water that was leaking through the pile in order to heat it up much faster not allowing it to flow right out of our compost and kind of holding it like a sponge in the bottom of our compost pile. So after we filled up the trench with material we threw a couple coils in staggering them through the layers about six inches to a foot apart and kind of in and out of the center of the pile so we don't disrupt the activation of the pile and the actual burn by having it too dense together because you want it all staggered throughout so the compost can breathe and not be too bunched up with hose in one area or the other. I may throw a piece of hose through the outside or through the bottom of this compost pile to blow some air through it to blow hot air out also with a solar powered fan. So the most important things here are getting your compost hot and setting up your solar powered system. We had just rebuilt our box and set up all of our wires and just got this going. So I'm gonna break this down and kind of show what we're doing here so everybody can understand how this operates. Coming over to these systems here, We've got our little DC powered 12 volt pump and it pumps about 100 gallons per hour on a decently sunny day, which is pretty good for us. That's a lot of water movement and that's a lot of heat transfer. So I'm gonna put the cap back on that for right now. I'm gonna run down, we got what, 90 degrees or so on a freshly built compost pile. That is awesome. And this pile doesn't look that large and tall but it's dug down about three feet in the earth and all mixed together. So you can see our output hose. This one runs to our beds and back into our overflow. And then we've got our input from our pump going right into our compost pile. So that all coils through and comes back down. 
Let's check out our solar panel system. We've got this cheap little eco-worthy solar controller. I'm gonna kick that on. We've got water flowing through our compost, slowly starting to heat up. So the water in our tub is about 42, 43 degrees. And the water coming out is about 51 already. That's pretty good transfer for just being water that's sitting, pumping cold water through it. I wanna let this run for a couple days and see what kind of heat we're getting during the day and what kind of heat we're carrying into the night. I like to keep our little cover on there. It fits perfectly. It's just a garbage can lid and it perfectly covers that in order to keep all of the debris out. And we're using it to keep algae from growing in our overflow tank. So this system is completely autonomous. That solar controller is absolutely awesome for being such a cheap model. It allows us to run this system as much as possible basically as soon as there's enough energy in the system it starts to slowly transfer the water now that this is back on i had to shut it down while we were taking our systems apart and rebuilding the new one so i plan to bring an update on this system as it progresses through the winter here and our second layer is on this greenhouse so we will be able to hold much more and lose a lot less so this will work a lot better once we lose 50% less by adding a second layer of poly. So all of these solar powered systems are going to benefit us in the long run and we are spending zero money to get there.